Some okay, of the good. European Union, this will be, it will be, unfortunately, be negotiated on this for many months, if not years to come. The European Union imposed new sanctions on Iran last month. It put two Iranians on its, uh, its list, as well as an intelligence unit, after there were attacks in Denmark, in France, and the Netherlands. So the European leaders are saying, what is Iran doing it, trying to carry out assassinations on European soil? They also see this as part of a, of a kind of behavior that they want to stop. Well, They've imposed sanctions, so it's not simply well, just allegations. And if, the, yeah. people have okay, been arrested I mean, in France. Sanctions based on allegations, mm. not, not sanctions based on facts. Let me, let me make a couple of comments because this is very important and I, I want mm. to really address this. First of all, the arrest of the person who is charged with uh, the Vilpan bombing happened on the day of arrival of our president in Europe after many months of preparation. Do you think, you think we're really crazy? That we do this on the day, at least we do it the day before, the day after, 10 days after, wouldn't die. We do it on the day that our president comes here. I mean, give us some credit. Some accusations now, that perhaps see. it was a Hold rogue, a rogue operation within it must, Iranian it, agencies? It could be a false flag operation, it could have been an entrapment, it could have been a rogue operation, but it's certainly not the work of a government that you should call crazy if we did it. And you don't gain the influence that we have by being simply crazy. Now, let me address another issue. There are allegations. Now, the Netherlands made allegations. They kicked out two of my diplomats, my diplomats, career foreign ministry officials, and now their intelligence is saying that they had no evidence. No evidence. Now, we are the aggrieved party. Second point. What is clear is that there are people in Europe who have been on Europe's terrorism list up until 2012. What happened all of a sudden that they were withdrawn from the terrorism list? You see, I followed these issues for a long time. In 1984, let me take you back a bit in history. In 1984... It's an unfortunate date to use, but let's... Yeah. The United States removed... Saddam, not, not no, hold on, history, hold on. History, the United because... States removed Saddam Hussein from its terrorism Listen. list and put Iran on terrorism list. The, again, in 1990, Saddam Hussein was put back on the terrorism so we list. We cannot keep in going 20, back to Saddam in, Hussein. In 1998, Listen. the United States put MEK on the terrorism list. In 2012, they took it off the terrorism list. This is a game. This game needs to stop. A terrorist is a terrorist is a terrorist. Terrorists don't, don't change. Rudy Giuliani yesterday spoke for, for, for the MEK. John Bolton has spoken for the MEK. John Bolton is angry because he promised the MEK that he would celebrate in 2019 in Iran with them. Does they are still in Paris. Do you think John Bolton represents what some say that a lot of the statements of President Trump's administration verge on regime, wanting regime change? Uh, I think the United States administration is not doing anything but regime change only right. regime change. It wouldn't have withdrawn from JCPOA the way it withdrew from JCPOA had it not had the illusion that there would be regime change within a month. Let's look, let's I mean, look. the United States, the, this administration is listening to wrong folks. These guys have been, uh, have had the illusion that Iran will evaporate for the past 40 years. And we are still here. Seven administrations have gone, okay. and we are still here. Let's and I think we will be here for a long time. You see, we had an empire. Okay, let's not go back to history. Okay, that let's keep more than the lives this, of some this, countries. At this rate, we're going to be back to the seventh century. We don't have time for the seventh century right now, although we're very cognizant. Oh, that's earlier oh, yes, than yes, seventh yes, century. Yes, okay. um, <laughs> that goes yes. seven thousand okay. years but ago. I'm going, to, I'm going to take the privilege of the chair and introduce at least history of a year. Last year, when we all gathered here at the Munich Security Conference, you will remember, ladies and gentlemen that there was a real concern that the region was slipping towards war between Israel and Iran, a proxy war being carried out in Syria. Now, as we meet last month, there was another uh, series of um, is Israeli attacks on what they said was your weapons depot, training bases, hitting Damascus International Airport, which angered the Russians and the Syrians, and Iran fired back. Is the risk of war, of, of, of real confrontation, even greater than it is, greater this year than when we met last year? Well, certainly some people are looking for war. We are Who in Syria. Looking? Who is looking? Israel. We are in Syria on the invitation of the Syrian government 
for the sole purpose of fighting terrorism. No other, no other reason for our being there. I think last I checked international law, violating Lebanon's airspace and shooting into Syria is a violation of international law. And the, and in, in the international community and of all people, Europe, which believes international law is the foundations of international order, is blaming us and not blaming the Israelis for violating international law. So let's wake up. So the risk is great. Is risk great. is great, but risk will be even greater if you continue to turn a blind eye to severe violations of international law. These are violations of international law. Let's say we live in a jungle and let's allow everybody. So let's not talk about human rights let's, because okay, Khashoggi, that's, that's... Khashoggi put human rights uh, in the shelves. I mean, anybody who claims human rights, just remind them of Khashoggi and I'll tell you, okay. it's, it's gone. Keeps... Let's not talk about international law because Israeli behavior is putting international law on the shelves. U.S. behavior is putting international law on the shelves. Let's just rid ourselves of all these uh, non-essential non restraints, uh, according to the United States, because John Bolton once said when he was my colleague in the United Nations, that international law is a tool in our toolbox. Okay. We use it whenever we like it to. Okay, so it's, not, it's not a tool in the toolbox. It, it's either the foundations of international relations or nothing. Okay, I'm glad you put human rights in the agenda because we've all agreed here at the Munich Security Conference that we do have to pay greater attention to human security. You mentioned human rights. The Europeans are also saying to you, what about eight environmentalists who've been in prison for the last year? The Persian Wildlife Heritage Foundation. And I know the Europeans are saying we cannot we cannot finance environmental projects in Iran if environmentalists are going to jail. Even Iranian officials have said there is nothing against them. Can you assure people here that there will be justice in this case and uh, many others? Uh, hold on. As I said, I think concern for human rights after Not Khashoggi. Not just concern, but after, action. After Khashoggi. Let's leave that to the side. Why should I? When the Saudis why, are in the why chair, I'll ask I? the Saudis. You are still selling weapons to Saudi Arabia. Why should I set aside Khashoggi? Tell me about Hold eight environment. No, Hold no, no, on. we don't have... Okay, to I'll talk about the environment. But, but talk, let, talk. Us, let us put this charade away, this hypocrisy away. Your Excellency, we, are, we, we all here, all of us, have condemned the terrible crime of the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. What happened? And may it be... What may happened that afterwards? What happened afterwards? Same type of relations... No okay. stop in environmental okay. support right. for Saudi Your point Arabia. Is taken. No the point is taken. Okay, but good. Let us focus now, on now let's, your partners when you here walk down, want to know about your human let's rights walk record. Down. Okay, let's walk down together. Yes. Let's not take the high moral ground because we, you certainly don't have it. Let's walk down together. We in the government don't control the judiciary. We have our complaints this about... This is what you always hold on, say, yes. Hold on. We have you have an our, elected president who promised Iranians better freedoms, yeah. more freedoms, including human rights. And you see, when I said we rely on our people for our security, we don't get support from outside. We don't have a Senator Lindsey Graham saying that we would be speaking Arabic if they didn't support us for one week. We, we rely on these people. So respecting their rights, respecting their freedoms is not just a moral obligation for us, it's a national security requirement for us. Without them, we are nothing. Can we see? Without just, our people, yes. we are nothing. We have excesses. We have areas where I don't disagree with, I don't agree with, the government doesn't agree with. We have an independent judiciary. The president doesn't have any power over the judiciary. We're doing all, all what we can. They say, as the judiciary, and I have no way of testing the validity of their claim, that these people were charged with certain types of crime. It is for a court of law to decide. I am not that because court. It's, it's I, can call, you at a time. I can call for humanitarian uh, behavior with them, for uh, clemency, for all, all of that, and we've been doing that. But it's not our job. Because it's one hurting you at a time when you would like greater investment to try to keep the Iran nuclear deal alive. You have the British Foreign Secretary taking the, un, the really unprecedented step of telling dual nationals, those holding Iranian and British passports, it could be another passport, don't go to Iran because it's too risky. More than 30 dual nationals are in prison. No, no That not doesn't 30. help you, for, you see, and it doesn't have, help Iran nor have, those people in prison. We have hundreds of thousands of dual nationals who come to Iran every year. How many of them, rightly or wrongly, yes, I'm, not, I'm not dealing with yes. that, rightly right. or wrongly are, are in jail. I mean, there are more Iranian single nationals in jail. 
So should every Iranian leave the country? I'm so sorry. But, you, but, the, the, but it's part of a package, isn't it? When it comes to Iran's um, engagement with the international community, we appreciate Iran has its grievances, but Iran also has its own responsibilities to, 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 to keep. See, our responsibility to our citizens is something, and we have mistakes, shortcomings, excesses that we need to address. But it's not for Europe. As I said, did you stop your dealings? Did your businesses stop going to Saudi Arabia to invest? So don't tell me that your businesses are not coming to Iran because you're concerned about human rights. Did they stop going to I mean, the coffers were too big. Maybe. They didn't stop. So, I mean, let's, let's be honest with each other. I'm a human rights professor. I have taught human rights for over 30 years. So I have concerns about human rights. I believe human rights need to be respected. I believe human rights for us is a security requirement, not a moral nicety. It's a security requirement. But I believe Europe, and certainly the United States, are not in a position. I remember at times Saddam Hussein was We're voting in but, favor but of resolution. May Saddam Hussein Iran. rest in peace. But we Saudi Arabia peace. today, yes, yes. Saudi <laughs> Arabia <laughs> today in the United yes. Nations was one of the major supporters of the human rights resolution against Iran. Is this the human rights the international community wants to uphold? We know that this still resonates in Iran, that history still has a very strong, strong presence in Iran. And we, we thank you. Your point is well taken that you, you mention it. No, I'm talking, yeah, about, yes. I'm talking yes. about last month. I'm right. not talking about right. history. Okay. One last comment from you, sir, as we bring our conversation to a close, <laughs> our friendly conversation to a close. It is as friendly. We've been friends for 30 some years. Um, yes. Your Excellency, when you've had many meetings here, and as you prepare to leave Munich this year, you've had many conversations with your allies, you've heard many statements, are you leaving more worried about the future of the Iran nuclear deal and your position in the region, or are you more reassured that there can be a way forward? If we derived our security from here, we I would have been more worried. But since we derive our security from our people, I'm not at all worried. Your Excellency, the, the Foreign Minister of the Islamic Republic of Europe, there are many more questions, and I'm sure, ladies and gentlemen, you have many more. But please join me in thanking His Excellency, Mohammed Jawad Zardif.